What is going on guys, Bisectatron here bringing you today's video and we are talking about a very cool base building technique, um, something that I, in the past I think hasn't worked as well but I've been liking it a lot lately and this is putting your Archer Queen and if you have her, the Royal Champion on the outside of the base and we're going to talk about why um, you can see in this case the Archer Queen is on that outer layer which I think has actually been pretty effective in a lot of attacks. And it's a little bit counterintuitive, but I'm going to talk about it in this video and why you might want to consider using it. And this applies to, I'd say, you know, even Town Hall 10 uh, and above. So it's a very versatile uh, technique in terms of all the different Town Hall levels you can apply this to. Uh, this first attack, one thing I really like is that oftentimes you can just melt a tank. I mean, that golem died so quickly uh, under the fire of that Archer Queen. And by putting the Archer Queen or the Royal Champion, uh, both of which are extremely high damage dealing units on the outside of the base, you can oftentimes uh, take advantage of the fact that the attacker is going to be setting things up, dropping tanks. Um, it's not going to be as it is in, inside the base, where oftentimes if you're uh, putting the Queen in the core, by the time she is engaged, the troops are going to be so dense, they're just going to roll right through her, especially on like a spam attack. But when she's on the outside of the base, um, unless it's just being a, troops are being spammed directly at her, that's not going to be the case and she's going to be able to do a lot more damage since she won't be under fire as much. And even on a spam attack, you have to drop the tanks first usually. There's going to be lots of opportunities for her to really do some damage and weaken the attack. So we will fast forward here. Um, this one is not going to be successful. Uh, the Lalo here does not get through the base. We'll take a look at some other example replays. Then I'm going to break things down a little more in the base editor and show you guys some of my favorite uh, little mini setups that you can use um, regardless of your town hall level I'd say town hall 11 12 13 um, I think this is a, a, something to think about for all of those so let's take a look at a couple more replays these are going to be town hall 13s just based on the clan I'm in here but like I said this is a very versatile thing can apply it to other town hall levels as well now one thing you got to be careful about is if you're going to put your queen towards the outside you want to make sure you're not going to give too much value on this little suey blimp. And you can see here, the attacker is going to actually have to use a freeze spell, which, you know, it's good we're forcing an extra spell, but you don't want to give the queen up quite so easily with all this other um, value. You have the scatter shot, the inferno tower, um, in this case, also setting up some good pathing. Going to get that cannon and maybe even that wizard tower. And, yep, got the wizard tower. So a lot of value there. Want to be careful um, as the uh, attack or as the uh, base builder putting too much value near your queen, not just for the Sui blimp, but also um, for the uh, lightning spell and just general queen charges, Sui type setups. I think it's a good thing to put your queen on the outside of the base, and that's what we're going to look at in the next attack. And I'm going to talk about more in this video, but you got to be careful that it's not around a lot of other valuable buildings that's going to make it very easy for the attacker to just kind of get the queen along with everything else they're investing um, in that area. So this one we'll go ahead and go times two. It's actually not going to triple either. Uh, you can see here it's a queen charge to start. Going to come in there, try to get the eagle. But I believe the queen is actually not going to go into the base here. That's one thing I like about this base is you'll notice that the eagle is uh, has a tile you know gap between it and the wall. And then this compartment... These buildings, I think it was an expo and maybe like a builder hut or an air sweeper or something, also has a one tile gap. So what that's doing is the queen's not going to ever get that close to the eagle, so it's hard for that to be the next building she targets. That's a nice uh, anti-queen charge technique. My favorite one because it's so easy to implement. You just got to have that extra spacing so there's not that building that's going to pull the queen into the base where the attacker wants her to go. Um, so big fan of that. Now one thing that actually happened really fast here, I, it's too bad I wanted to make a bigger point of it, putting the king in the core is sometimes a better idea than putting the queen in, and that's kind of counterintuitive to what we've, you know, learned in the past. You always want to defend your queen more, but the king, he actually did a good job holding up the hybrid, uh, drawing all the miners to him, uh, holding up the royal champion, letting the town hall stay up a lot longer than it otherwise would have, so that's something to think about, is putting your king towards the core, your queen towards the outside. Uh, the queen's a lot more agile, she shoots a lot faster, has more range, she's able to defend herself better on the outside of the base, whereas the king's main power is all the hit points he has, and sometimes it's a good idea to put those hit points inside your base, 
whether it's a dragon attack, a hybrid attack, the, the troops have to take him out as part of their uh, journey through the base. And you can kind of exploit that um, by putting such a high hit point unit deep inside your base um, where uh, otherwise it might not be as effective. So one more example attack to take a look at here. These are not the best bases by any stretch, guys. Don't get me wrong here. But uh, for whatever reason, the, the heroes ended up kind of being on the outside of the base here. And I think once again, it, it worked to the benefit of the uh, defender here. This is just a basic Sui dragon attack. So dropping down the uh, Royal Champion doesn't quite get as much value maybe as, uh, as was desired here. But, you know, clears out that outer layer. And then here come the dragons, basically. What we're going to see is the Queen's going to do a great job pulling things away. And once again, you know, when we're looking at dragon attacks, you want your dragons to try to stay inside the base as much as possible. A big part of a dragon attack is the funneling. And in this case, um, the queen's going to do a good job pulling everything toward the outside of the base, um, which is what is uh, going to be most beneficial for the base builder. This was a very interesting attack in that the bats were deployed like right in the middle of everything just because there weren't any splash damage. So that was kind of unusual, but... Uh, Regardless, you're going to see that the dragons are going to go out to the queen. Um, she does a good job drawing them away from the clan castle area. And then they're just never going to recover back into the base here. Uh, the blimp, you know, gets some good value. I think it might even get the town hall down here. Good placement, by the way, of that uh, tornado trap. Uh, but still, the, the blimp does its job. It gets the air defense, but there's nothing to actually come in here and get these remaining air defenses, archer towers. Um, even that inferno tower was still up. So I think, once again... Both the Royal Champion there and the Archer Queen down there uh, did a pretty good job in terms of kind of splitting the dragons up and uh, making it real challenging to, uh, to keep them inside the base here. So we will go fast forward to the end of this one and I want to focus a little bit more specifically on some setups you can use in your, in your bases. So let's go ahead and um, open things up here, hop on over here to a little setup I have going and a few things to talk about. So first of all, this is a good thing um to do here and basically you're putting your queen on that outer layer of the base and typically a single inferno is a good idea just in case the attacker is trying to do something with the king or the queen um to kind of trade heroes or something it's good to have the inferno tower that has the ability to take out a high hit point unit whatever it's going to be i like the tesla off to the side it can kind of pull a tank um, in case there's going to be some type of attack that involves dropping down like an ice golem or a golem, it can pull the tank away and really make things trickier than otherwise. And then of course, you got to have that skeleton trap, I feel like, um, to really take away four or five shots from whatever the, the uh, unit is, whether it's the other archer queen or something else, and allow your queen even more time to do damage. Because every second, she does a ton of damage at that max level, regardless of what town hall level you are. So that being said, this is another thing I really like, and this one I might even encourage you to do more. This is a very isolated hero. Um, this might be like the corner of your base, for example. Maybe you'll have some other defenses somewhere else, but in general, imagine this is like the corner of your base on one, one of your four corners, and you have your Royal Champion, in this case, very isolated, and what that does um, is it means there's not gonna be any uh, balloons, hogs, uh, tank troops that target defenses, all those defensive targeting units are going to ignore this area, so it's just going to be the non-defense targeting units. That does a good job splitting up hybrid, you know, hogs go one way, miners go the other. Um, also, just in general, it's going to be hard to drop a tank that's really going to uh, occupy the Royal Champion in, in a predictable way. And then what this can do is it can, uh, it has a lot of uh, DPS right in this part of the base because the Royal Champion, because the Archer Queen do a lot of damage, um, but it's also away from other defenses by a bit. Um, so it does a nice job spreading out your damage and makes it so the attacker has to deal with this, especially on a Lalo, that's really difficult. So um, I like kind of isolating the hero, maybe off in the corner, off in the side of your base, not giving them too much value in terms of getting other defenses if they're gonna do some kind of push here, um, but also making sure there's, there's some things in range uh, so that if there's a queen charge or something, uh, the queen's really going to be taking a lot of damage as she steps up uh, to take out these uh, elixir storages, for example. So um, this is a setup I like. Look to implement it in your base if you can, whether it's, you know, if you're a Town Hall 12 or below with your Archer Queen, very isolated in one of these corners. 
then just have these defenses kind of patrolling the area in almost a circle around it. I found it works well. Um, you kind of have to see it to believe it. Unfortunately, I don't have any replays of this specific setup to show. Um, but if, you, if it works out, let me know in the comments if you end up using it. Thanks for watching uh, this video. Hope it helped. Like I said, this is something you can use at any town hall level pretty much. So look to implement it. And I hope it works out for you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting the channel by entering my creator boost code, BISECT, in the settings tab of your game, and keep in mind it occasionally resets and must be re-entered. Click or tap for another video and be sure to subscribe. See you all next time, Bisectatron out.